y'all, I'm James Wright and welcome to my shop. Today we're gonna to be working on making a mortise and tenon. Particularly I'm gonna be showing how to make a through mortise and tenon. And that is where the tenon actually comes through the board. So this is gonna be kind of fun. Um, a through mortise and tenon can actually be a little bit more tricky, tricky than just doing a uh, straight up mortise and tenon that doesn't go through um, because you have to make both sides match. So come along and let's take a look at this thing. Now the very first thing I need to do is mark out where it needs to go on the board. And because I want this to actually match, this is going to be the exact same as one I've done previously. So I'm going to slide these ends up, flush them up down here and make sure they feel good. And then I'm just going to transfer nick marks over to from the board. Just a hair of a nick. And if I'm going to err one way or the other, I'm actually going to make the marks towards the inside of the tenon because I can always make the hole bigger, I can't always make it smaller. So if you're going to make a mark and you don't know precisely where it's gonna be, make it a little bit smaller than it needs to be so you can open it up a little bit. These I'm pretty confident about where they are because I'm just lining it up with the outside of this board. So now that I have these marks, let's show you how to finish it up. First thing I'm gonna do is set my square on here. I'm gonna put my knife actually right into that nick I made and then I'm gonna slide my square up against it and mark. And because I'm just doing it in the middle, I'm just going to make a slight nick mark in the middle here. And then I'll do the same thing over here. Now that I have my marks here in the middle of the board, I need to actually make the exact same marks on the other side of the board. And that's where it gets a little bit tricky. And so what I want to do, I'm going to be ending up chamfering these corners just a little bit so I don't mind putting a hairline nick in it. And so again, I'm going to put the blade into that mark that I just made, slide the square up against it. I'm just going to nick the corner, just a hair. And then I'm gonna go and do the same thing on this one. Roll this over, and then that nick I just made, I'm gonna put my knife into that mark, slide the square against it. I'm gonna make the same nick on this corner. Put my knife into this nick, slide it over, put the same nick on that corner. And that way when I roll this over, I can put the square into the same spot, make a mark in the middle of the board, same spot make a mark in the middle of the board, and now I'm ready to go. So I've already made the tenon here, and I want to make this mortise the same thickness as the tenon. The tenon I always designed to be the same thickness as one of my chisels. In this case, it's actually for an eight millimeter chisel. It's one I like to make, use for this. I can set up my mortising gauge to be the same measurements as the thickness of the tenon. And I always reference off the side with my marking. That way I know I am always keeping this on the same side as the side that's been marked. So now that I have my mortising gauge set up to the thickness of the tenon, I can transfer it over to this board. And on this board, I have the mark on this side, so I'm always going to reference off that side. So even when I mark on this side, the reference will always be off of that side one way or the other. So I can, just like with a tenon, make this mark in here, one side, and then the other. With this rolling mortise and gauge, it actually goes pretty well. And so there I've got my marks all the way across with a stop mark on either end. Now let's flip this over and do the same thing on this side. Now the tools I'm gonna to be using Number one, this chisel, and number two, a joiner's mallet. This has a little bit more heft, um, so I can put a little bit more strike on it. I'm not holding it all the way back here like a hammer. I'm holding it right up here, and my taps are literally just about that. So I'm just gonna be tapping this chisel in order to get it in. First thing I wanna do is, rather than starting with the flat of the chisel right into that marking gauge line, I wanna back it up a millimeter or two, about an eighth of an inch, and I'll give it one little tap. And what will actually happen is as I tap it, the chisel will move back towards the marking gauge line. And I don't want it to hit that marking gauge line, I want to keep that crisp. Once I've made that one tap in, I'm going to come over a little bit farther, make another tap. And that went in even deeper, that's down about a quarter inch already. Come over one more, might have to tap it twice here. And as you go, you'll hear my first tap kind of soft and then it will ring on when it hits the bottom. Here we go. And it just kind of rings when it gets to the bottom, it doesn't go out anymore. Now I'm down uh, three eighths of an inch, maybe a little bit more. And every time I move over, I'm just gonna move over an eighth inch or so.
and you can pull out these little chips. Now if you really want to get into the skill you can grab the chisel down here and it can go a lot faster but if you're just beginning sometimes it's hard to keep the chisel from twisting and now I'm down a little over half inch the less you chip off the deeper you'll go uh, which is kind of counterintuitive so if you try chipping off more than an eighth of an inch you're actually going to end up hurting yourself by not going down far enough. So basically I'm going to continue that all the way along here until I get to the other side, leading with the angle edge of the bevel from one end to the other. So I'm going to go ahead and hit that and I'll come back and show you more. So now I'm about an eighth of an inch away from my other marking gauge line. So what I actually want to do is rather than keeping the chisel vertical, I'm going to lean it back just a hair and just kind of make that slope because the slope is at the angle of the chisel tip inside the socket going that way and as I lean it over this way it's eventually going to make it straight and then I'll just turn it around and go down that way. So a few more strokes and now I'm pretty close to flat so I'm just going to angle it back this way And there we go. So now I've got all these junks pieces in here. I can kind of clean it out with this. And I am down halfway or a little bit more on this side. Now that I've gotten them mostly cleaned out, I'm actually going to come back and clean up this end a little bit because it basically has a step down slope until I get down into, I'm down about there right here. So I want to start heading that way, so I'm going to turn the chisel around so I'm always leaving, leading with the bevel side forward, and I'm going to start from here and work my way back that way. Oop. My chisel actually twisted, and so as I went in, one side bit and it twisted a bit like that. Um, it's something you just got to uh, got to learn from and get used to not letting the chisel twist. Sometimes you just get a little sloppy and it'll twist on you, even when you know it's coming. So I'm basically going to do the exact same thing I did on the other end with this and clean it out. So now that this mortise is down um, over halfway most of the depth across, I'm going to flip this over and come at it from the other side. Um, I could go all the way through from one side, but that has some trickiness in that you may have veered one way or the other and if you come at it from both sides you'll end up correcting your problem so let's unclamp it flip it over and I'm going to basically do the exact same process from the other side and I'll pick up uh, when I actually connect the two and show you how to finish it so basically I'm working back along this just exactly like I did the other side I'm leading with the bevel edge of the chisel going first making my way back along this mortise and I'm progressively getting a little deeper and a little deeper and a little deeper until I finally hit the end and the chisel just goes down and down and down. And that says, oh, you hit through to the other side. So now, every single one of my cuts from here on out goes all the way through to the other side. And so this is when things kind of get exciting and you want to go faster, but you have to remind yourself to slow down and do it correctly or you're going to end up with a bad mortise. So let me finish this up. I'll come back to here and then show you how to clean out either end and make the tenon fit. So now I've chopped it out from one end to the other and it is pretty darn good um, except for the fact that on either end I haven't gone completely to the end. And so there's a big hole through the middle but now I need to clean up either end. So to start that with now that I've put everything through there I'm just going to poke my chisel down through this over the edge of the bench and knock out everything that's been impacted against the table. And on this case, I let it impact a little bit too much, and so it's harder to get out of there. Now that I have it back and clamped the table, 
I'm going to actually clean out this mortise. And it's not quite to the point I can do it by hand. I still have to use a mallet. So just like before, I'm keeping sure, I'm making sure I keep the chisel straight. I'm staying away from the marking aid line. I'm just taking it off nibble by nibble until I get this line perfectly square so that when the chisel is in the marking gauge line, it's perfectly up and down and going all the way down into it. Now sometimes I will undercut it just a little bit so that inside the chisel will be going back to like here and then vice versa, but this outside edge is perfectly tight. Um, because it's ingrained connecting with the tenon, the end grain of this board really isn't gonna have much gluing surface to the tenon, so it's not gonna make a huge amount of joint, amount of strength as long as it's connected on the face on both sides because that face is what is holding a through tenon. Chisels basically up and down and I'm not going to go all the way through because I don't want it to blow out into the table but I also don't want it to miss the line on the other side. So I'm down like 80% of the way. I'm just going to undercut it just a hair by hand. And there's that side. So let me finish up this side, flip the board over, basically do the exact same thing on the other side, and then we can test fit the tenon. So I'll come back when I finish that up. So now that the mortise is being completely cleaned out to my marking gauge lines in all ways, all the way through, we can test fit it. Now what's gonna happen is most of the time when you're making a through tenon, your chisel is going to slightly angle one way or the other. And when you flip it over, it's gonna do the exact same way. Or it's gonna do the opposite way and you're gonna end up with a belly on one side or other side inside the mortise. And so when you put this in, it's gonna go in little ways and it's gonna jam like that. And when you can see it wiggling, you can see that the fulcrum of the wiggle is over here. So that means that there's a little bit of a belly on this side, on one side of the board or the other. And when I look into that mortise, it will become fairly obvious. If I look over on this side and look at it through the light, I'm gonna be able to look through and see, oh, I've got a belly on this side of the mortise about halfway down. So in order to fix that, I'm gonna grab a little bit larger chisel and I'm gonna come in with a solid control. Let me zoom out a little bit so you can see this and I'm gonna come in it with a solid control. So I'm holding it down here and I'm holding it up here and I'm going to very lightly pare away the inside of that belly. And I'm not gonna go all the way through to hit the table. Just taking off light curls all the way down, making sure this is good and sharp. Flip it over. Remember that your belly is now on the opposite side and I'm going to come at it from the other side. So once you've paired it out pretty well and you think it's, and you think it's good to go, get an eye down it and make sure that there isn't any fuzz or anything sticking out. You can use a quarter inch chisel. Uh, sometimes you need to come along the end grain and just break off a few of the fibers that are sticking out into the groove. Make sure it's nice and clean and then you can test it again. And most of the time when you're first starting out, it's not gonna go all the way in and you're gonna have to clean it out again in another time. And sometimes it'll go part of the way in. And you can look at it from the other side and make sure um, how far in is the problem. And that will oftentimes show exactly where you need to clean out. So let me just do a hair more cleaning on this one and I'll show you the test fit. So after paring down, um, you're going to want to just make sure your hole is clean and you're going to eyeball down it and make sure there isn't any, anything sticking out into it. Sometimes I have to take a little bit of a, a smaller chisel to go in and break off some of those loose fibers. Um, I just like my hole as clean as possible. That way there's a nice smooth surface for glue to attach to. And once it's the way you think it, is, think it should be, you can try it again. And you're probably gonna find another spot you need to clean out. Sometimes you'll get it about halfway through and you can look at it from the, from the end and see exactly where it's hitting and you can clean out that point. Um, it's just a, a, a trial and error. And the more you do it, the better you'll get at it. And eventually, you'll make a perfectly straight cut all the way down and the first time you touch it, the thing just goes And it's just, it's, it's amazing when that happens. Um, but it's not gonna happen for a long time. <laughs> um, most people are gonna have to do hundreds of these before they have really nice fitting, um, consistent joints. And in this case, I'm a hair tight still, but not bad. And so now I have a nice tight joint where the tenon sticks through about an eighth of an inch and I'll come out and I'll clean that out 
a little bit sloppy on the bottom here. Uh, it wasn't quite as tight as I wanted to be, but uh, not bad. It will actually uh, end up being a fairly decent joint. And that's one of the things that I really want to push to people is, yes, having perfect joints is a wonderful thing. Having really nice tight joints is awesome. But you're not going to get really nice tight joints until you do hundreds of joints. And literally, even then, you're going to have some that come out unless you are just taking an immense amount of time and, and doing things extra precise. Um, don't let that limit you. That's fine. This will be just as strong as if that were perfectly tight. I can guarantee it. This will last for just as long. So don't let that worry you and don't, be that, don't let that be something that holds you back. Just uh, be willing to dive in and give it a try. And there you go. A mortise and tenon. So there is the mortise and tenon. Um, a fairly simple job and if you can do a through tenon you can easily do a, uh, a standard tenon that doesn't go in all the way. Um, and with a standard tenon that uh, doesn't go all the way through um, you don't have to make sure that the bottom is perfectly flat. Uh, the, the glue joint of the end grain on the tenon is just not going to hold worth of anything and so if it goes a little bit deeper than the tenon can reach that's perfectly fine. Um, don't be afraid to jump in and mess up. That's the, the first thing that I like to tell most people is, you're going to mess up on the first try. Don't worry about making it perfect. Try to mess up and you will learn far more than if you try to make it perfect. Because if you try to make it perfect, you're just going to kill yourself. And you're, you're gonna be mad that it didn't come out right because first tries never come out right. So just jump in and give it a try and you might be amazed at what you can do. So there's a mortise and tenon. I hope you really like this. Um, it's a really a simple joint and kind of one of the basics. Once you can do a mortise and tenon and a bridle joint, uh, the world opens up to you. That is like 99% of all casework, and most all jointing is, is that right there. So I hope you like it. Um, please let me know in the comments below. Is there something I could have done better? I'd love to hear about it. Huge thank you to all the uh, patrons that are helping me out on Patreon. You guys are really the, chan really the reason that this channel is happening. So thank you and keep it up. If you did like the video, please hit like. Think about subscribing. Also check out one of my other videos. You might find something you like there. And until next time, have a wonderful day.